the creation and recreation of beings. By Luis Alberto. We start with Titian Rusicielo and his Italian Renaissance paper that lived from 1888 to 15. Uh, he was active in 1506 and he is known for his use of color. Um, Titian uh, is most famous for his painting The Venus of Rubino, which set uh, the, tra the tradition for the morning mood. You can see here is known for the use of color. And um, it's a, it has a traditional representation of beauty during this time. And as well, uh, it's very famous for, for its color style, uh, which is named Colorito, which is heavy use of color. So as many uh, uses of uh, layers of color used on and over and over again, used as um, uh, the, the, just to do the contrast in the colors, um, as you can see here in the, on the couch, as well as the skin tones of Venus. And it helps contrast the painting, it helps uh, divert your gaze to certain, certain details that otherwise you wouldn't notice if in a normal style. Uh, the historical context of Venus is that Venice was a city-state which was uh, controlled by families to uh, ol oligarchy. So this was this is important because that's the the, the painting itself uh, was sponsored by rich aristocrats, and this and and this uh, heavy interest by the wealthy also contributed to the success of the arts. Uh, the painting itself is for uh, Francisco Maria de la Rovere, uh, the Duke of Urbino, whom the painted was for, and this painted was. Uh, hung in his private chambers. Uh, cultural context, uh, Titian, uh, Venus is accurate of the Italian Renaissance because it's time, uh, during this time, um, the arts, theater, uh, writing and, and the arts were exploding. And the lying nude, uh, although controversial for religious reasons, was also an ode to um, the naturalism or the beauty of a woman. Now we have um, Venice was also the center because um, they, they were uh, they had a lot of large trading uh, so they became very wealthy and very powerful and it was Italy center for the art. So it was one of the most powerful city of Italy and Italy uh, not being united at the time each individual city was uh, responsible for its own economy, and this trading uh, contributed to, uh, to to Venice's powerful economy. Now we have Edouard uh, Manet. Um, he was a painter that lived from 1832 to 1883. After failing naval school, he went to Paris to pursue art, and he was constantly criticized for his style, and he is considered the father of modernism. His style was realistic, and he was um, later on pushed to uh, leave France for the question of his work. His heavy criticism came from his Olympia, because it was non traditional style beauty. Um, uh, this painting made him known for the father of modernism. Although it was uh, a dedication, you can say, or owed to the Venus of Urbino. Uh, you can see he's very different. He did things very differently. He did not cater to the, the traditional interpretation of um, naturalism. This painting as well uh, exposed to contradiction with critics because it meant that women can only be idolized for the for the for the for the goddess features, but not represented in a realistic fashion. So this again expresses the opposite uh, thing of realism versus uh, naturalism.
then you can see the shift from the 17th century going into uh, the 18th century, which is really, really important um, because it was 18th and 17th century was still the same heavy uh, naturalism while the 19th century started representing more realistic features. And the reason why that was because during the time when uh, Olympia was painted, France was extremely politically unstable during the 19th century. Had a lot of ref refugees from different countries coming into France. So you had high immigration. And the reason France was so politically unstable is because um, they had to pay damages for uh, all the wars that they caused in the beginning of the century. So they were always paying other countries. So their economy wasn't involved. And you still had a majority of population still living in the countryside. So there wasn't heavy urbanization like there was in other, um, in other European cities, which other European cities were booming because of the Industrial Revolution during this century. But, Fr but uh, France was not one of those um, countries at the time. Now, Venus and Olympia, although they're uh, very similar, they share two distinct features, which is their gaze, which is, uh, I believe, the more, most important uh, feature of each of these paintings. And it, it uh, is realism versus naturalism again. Um, Olympia is more direct, more confident. Um, you can say it's almost more of a of a feminist approach. And then you have uh, Venus, which is more coy, more playful, is more idealized of what a man um, at the time think a woman should behave like. Okay, so realism is uh, obviously more faithful to depicting reality and actual social realities, which what Manet's painting does with Olympia, because Olympia was known to be a um, a prostitute, not necessarily a Venus, which a Venus is a goddess, um, according to Italian uh, the Renaissance. And it's less perfected. You can see that uh, Titian's lines are more perfected. You can see that his coloring is more soft and and smooth and Titchens is more rough and real you know if you were to go look at a person uh, uh, Mon uh, Monet's would be very um, I mean excuse me Manet's would be very more uh, more realistic to look at works side.